Matthew 26, verses 36 through 44. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us for our HC Groups videos. As today we get into this prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I want to kick off by asking you a very important question. Have you ever found yourself feeling like you're living out of control? Think about that for a second. Have you ever found yourself, even recently, feeling like you are out of control? You see, I can remember about a year ago, my wife and I, we were actually flipping a house, which ended up going really great, but it was a huge challenge and a huge stretch for us. And one of the projects I wanted to uh, take on um, was that I wanted to paint the exterior of the house and I wanted to do a DIY version. And because I watched uh, a YouTube video on it, I felt like I was a pro on how to paint exteriors of houses. And so what ended up happening is um, I rented this 30-foot tall ladder uh, so it was very tall, very, very tall. So most uh, ladders are six feet tall. So I think five times larger than that. So 30 foot ladder. And one day I got it set up at the side of the house that we we're working on. And I had it laying up against the side of the house. And I started climbing up to the top of this ladder to get a feel for what it'd feel like to get towards the top, uh, near the top of this roof to paint around the edges. And as I got towards the top, and I'm not somebody who's normally afraid of heights, I started to feel seriously out of control. I started to get nervous. Like the, the, the ladder below me started shaking a little bit. And, and then I, back, I walked back down and, and, and I'm not always somebody who thinks safety first, which I probably should be that person, but I wasn't thinking about safety. I was just like, how do I get this project over with? How do I finish this thing? And I didn't mention to you guys this, but my wife and kids were actually out of town. So I was literally there by myself on this 30 foot ladder trying to paint it. And then not only that, but then I also had to carry the paint bucket up and paint brushes and all the tools. So I had a five gallon bucket I was trying to carry up. So in my mind, I'm like, I gotta make this happen. So I started climbing up the ladder with this five gallon paint bucket and all my tools. And there's this voice in the back of my mind just saying, stop what you're doing, this is stupid. And I ignored that voice, right? And then, oh, I didn't mention this as well, but there's also these sideways winds happening. It was, it was literally like kind of a scary situation I found myself in. But luckily for me, my wife was calling and she wanted to check in and FaceTime with me with, the, with uh, my daughters. And sure enough, when she started FaceTime me, I just explained to her you know, what I was doing. I said, yeah, I'm just climbing on the ladder and I'm trying to paint. And she was like, you gotta stop. What are you doing? Like, it's windy out, you're gonna die. And sure enough, I, I took her advice. I got off the ladder and I waited till she was around to help and I got some help for the next weekend when she was back in town. But it was this moment where I truly felt scared and nervous. It was a terrible experience. And the reason it was terrible is because I had literally no control. And if I'm honest, the last couple of years have been a huge exercise in control. The reason why is because for many of us, we've had no control. I mean, think about this. About two years ago, we were told that we needed two weeks to flatten the curve of COVID. How did that go? How much control do we have over that? For those of you who are parents, you were told that your kids are gonna go home for school for the day two years ago and they'd have a week off you know, to, to assess COVID and figure out the whole thing. How did that go? Uh, as parents, it seems like kids are getting, being pulled in school, out of school. Uh, schedules are changing all the time. There's so many things that are like just out in the open and unknown and the future seems uh, unknown in many ways. For some of you, you've had to deal with family health crises that have left you very much unknown and feeling like things are very much out of your control. Think about this past year when it comes to Ukraine and Russia and just the fear that surrounds that of just the unknown with the future. See, the truth is this, when we look at the future, sometimes it can be, it can be scary. It can be very uncomfortable, especially when we feel like we don't have any control at all. And I believe that Jesus, in the story of him in the Garden of Gethsemane, he can relate to that. 
You see, when we pick up this story that we just read a minute ago, we find Jesus at a very vulnerable spot. The savior, the savior of the world is almost at his breaking point. Here he is, knowing his impending doom is about to happen. He spends the entire night in prayer between him and his heavenly father. And it's crazy because he knows his captors are coming. He knows the impending doom that was about to come upon his body. And he's praying feverishly throughout the night. And in fact, the Gospel of Luke records it as saying that his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Think about that for a second. His sweat was like drops of blood falling for the ground. And for a moment here, he shows his humanity when he says, please take this cup from me. So he's asking his father, he's like, God, if you could, please take this from me. And the reason why he felt that way is he knew what was coming up. He knew he's about to be executed. He's about to be tortured, beaten, mocked, ridiculed. It was the worst way to die in, in the Roman government. And he saw it every single day, people around him being crucified. And he know that his time, he knew that his time on earth was about to be done. You see, this is how for some of us, we live our day to day lives, not wanting to fully surrender over control. Just like Jesus in that moment, we're saying to God, I don't want to go through all of that. I don't want to go through this pain. I don't want to go through this difficulty. In fact, when it comes to surrendering, I think a lot of us look like this verse that I'm about to read for you. It says this in Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with some of your heart. Lean on your own understanding. In some of your ways, acknowledge him and you can make your path straight. That's in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And for some of you, you may be thinking, wait a second, this seems like a weird verse. I want to give you the uh, translation that's the, from the KDV, which actually stands for the Kyle Dobbenmeyer version. And maybe for you, that's your version of how you live that life verse out. You say, I trust in the Lord, but with only with some of my heart. I lean on my own understanding. In some of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge God, and I'm going to make my own path straight. You see, oftentimes when we think about our relationship with God and trusting the future that we have no control over, we want to just kind of take things in our own hands. We want to trust in ourselves and not actually trust in the one who has control. And so what we see with Jesus, he starts off with this very human moment where he says, take this cup from me. But then he circles back and says, but not as my will, but your will be done. And I love that because it's so important that when we pray to God, no matter how difficult, we have to remember first that our prayers and our conversation with God are about honoring him first and trusting him first and following his will first before our own will. You see, let's pause and reflect for a moment on what would have happened if God would have answered his prayer. If his father said, you know what? I'm going to take this cup from you. You're good to go, man. I'm going to, I'm going to remove this from you. See, Jesus wouldn't have died, right? He would not have been crucified. He wouldn't have to do that, but he would have never been resurrected, right? If he wouldn't have died, he would not have been resurrected in the way that we know it, right? And therefore changing history forever. He would uh, have never had the chance to defeat death in that way. He would have fallen into sin and selfish ambition, just like the rest of us and been not much different than us. And then the implications for us is that we would be dead to our sin. We would have no hope for the afterlife. But instead what happened is Jesus actually went through it, no matter how difficult it was, no matter how scary, no matter how uncomfortable it was coming up, even though he prayed this prayer and he was scared. It's one of the lowest moments we find in all the scriptures is Jesus feeling this way, but he went through it. And the reason why is because it was God's plan. It was God's plan for his life. And the truth is this, I think we're all drawn towards the path of least resistance in our lives. When it comes to things being uncomfortable or scary, it's because we just don't know what's up ahead. And so oftentimes it's actually human nature for us to go towards the path of least resistance. This is nothing new. See, we as humans want to go where there's minimal friction. That's why if you ever try to make New Year's resolutions or saying you're gonna start a new habit or, or stop a bad habit, you know, oftentimes what you find is it's so hard because there's so much resistance that comes your way. We want these quick fix diets. We wanna quit, quit you know, smoking or quit whatever it may be in a quick experience. But we find ourselves like it's way quicker to just open up our phone. It's way quicker to go and scroll when we know we should be working out. It's way quicker to flip on Netflix, which requires no resistance than it is to actually read your Bible, right? And there's always this resistance. And what I would be honest with you and tell you is that no real good things in life come without resistance. If you really want to be a healthy person, there's going to become, there's going to become obstacles in your way. If things are going to stand in your way. It's going to be difficult. If you're somebody who wants to have great relationships, it's not going to be easy. If you want to grow in your faith, there's going to be some resistance that comes along with it. In fact, that's just the way it is in life. 
And let's be real, what would it look like if there was no resistance? What would it look like if your life, whenever you prayed to God and said like to him, like a genie in a bottle, God, take this from me, or God, help me with this. What would it look like if you would have gotten your way in every prayer? If you didn't ask for God's will, if you said, my will, God, I want you to do the things I want, what would that have looked like in your past? You might have stayed dating that unhealthy person because you just wanted it to work out. You might have stayed in that dead end job and had no idea what was coming around the corner. You might have made that financial purchase that it could have wrecked you, but at the time just seemed like a good idea or seemed like fun. Or maybe you could have missed out on something huge that God had for you because you were settling with what you knew and what was easy and what was comfortable. Or maybe you just would have never in the past even gone to God at all and only trusted in yourself. You see, here's the big idea today, it's this. When we pray for God's will to be done, we'll realize that no matter how challenging or uncomfortable, God's plans always trump our plans. That's the truth. His plans are always greater than ours, no matter how difficult or uncomfortable. And so I wanna give you a couple quick application points as we begin to apply this prayer into our day-to-day lives. First thing is this, pray for God's will to be done above your own will. So pray for God's will. So no matter what it is in life, Go to him, say, God, it's not about me. It's not about what I want. I'm trusting what you have for my life. That's the first thing. Second thing is this, pray for patience, even if you don't like the current results. And that's the hardest one. I try to remember daily to pray to God for patience because I'm not a patient person. But think about that right now in your life. What do you need patience for? What are you currently struggling with where maybe you don't like the current results, but you need patience in that? See, there's a reason why we have uh, microwaves and we have crock pots, right? Both of them heat up your food. Both of them get the food warm. Microwaves do it very quick, efficiently, but it's not always the best. But if you put something in a crock pot and you cook it for like eight hours, you know how good that tastes, right? That flavor, the way it's just been cooked together, that time sitting together just creates this amazing flavor and it's unforgettable, right? Whereas a microwave will do the same thing, it's just not quite as enjoyable. And I think when it comes to God and, and the way he works things out in our lives, we are constantly looking for quick results. When in reality, the best things come when we wait and we trust him. That could be leading, when it comes to leading a small group, you may feel like it's difficult right now. God's got something great for you. When it comes to leading your family, it may feel difficult right now, but be patient, God's got something great for you. When it comes to maybe at work, you may feel like there's certain obstacles that are standing in front of you. He wants to be faithful now. He's got great things in store. So remember to pray for patience, even if you don't like the current results. And the last thing is this, pray that you can be a person who lives by faith and not by fear. Pray that we can live by faith and not by fear. You see, I mentioned to you earlier, we don't have control right now. And we have to come to the realization that so much of life, it's just out of our control. And in that, we have to live by faith in God that he does have control. There's a reason why in the scriptures, it's mentioned over 365 times (laughs) that we need to fear not or do not fear or, or don't be afraid. That Uh, that that iteration of those words, don't be afraid, it's referenced 366 times in the scriptures. It's almost as if God knew on a daily basis we need to wake up and go to sleep with this one simple reminder, don't be afraid. Why? Because we put our trust in Him. We surrender control and we're saying, God, I trust you with the results. And so I'm gonna wrap up with this big idea once again. When we pray for God's will to be done, we'll realize that no matter how challenging or uncomfortable, God's plans always trump our plans. And that's my hope for you today. As you think about those things that you don't have control over, that you pray that God's will will be done and not your own.